This video is sponsored by Sculpted Stands. More about them later in this video. Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. The Raspberry Pi 5 has been out for some months now. So in 2024, as electronic musicians, can we finally run Windows VST software on a Raspberry Pi? If you want to find out, please join me in this video. Here we go. As always, here's what you need for today's experiment. This is a Raspberry Pi 5 with 8GB of RAM and a cooler installed, an SD card, an SSD drive, a USB adapter for the SSD drive, a USB network adapter, a USB sound card, a mouse and a keyboard, a USB hub and an HDMI cable. Now. Let's install the UEFI BIOS that's needed to boot Windows on the Raspberry Pi computer. Insert the SD card into your PC. Go to the web page seen on screen now and download the zip file containing the BIOS. Unzip this and copy the contents of the folder to the root directory of the SD card, which needs to be formatted with a FAT32 file system which is the default file system of SD cards. Then remove the SD card from your computer and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Next, put the SSD drive into its USB cradle and connect it to your computer. Then go to the Windows on Raspberry Pi Project's web page and download an image of Windows 11, as seen in this video. Also, download the Windows and Raspberry Pi installer, unzip it and launch it. Select your SSD drive and Raspberry Pi 3 as a target computer. Then point the tool at the Windows 11 image you just downloaded, select the Windows edition you want to install, confirm your choices and let the tool do its thing. This will take some minutes. After that's done, assemble all the hardware, connect the SSD drive and power on the Raspberry Pi computer. If everything works as intended, you will have to go through the usual Windows setup procedure, which I won't show here. If the system doesn't boot, try connecting the SSD drive to another USB port. In case you're wondering why all that external USB hardware is needed, the drivers for the onboard hardware of the Raspberry Pi aren't ready yet. See that synthesizer over there? You want that to sit on a stand, don't you? And Sculpted Stands is here to help you. All you have to do is to take measure of your synth's dimensions, then visit Sculpted Stands webpage and enter the depth, width and height of your instrument into their online configurator. Then choose Tilt, Lift and Color and place the order. And some days later, you'll own a perfectly aligned stand for your synth that's super easy to assemble. Link is in this video's description. And thanks to Sculpted Stands for their support. See what I did there? Support. Haha. <laughs> Okay, hardware is working. Now let's add the thing most of you asked for. A touch screen. I found this relatively big and bright capacitive touch screen, which registers as a standard USB mouse. Link is in this video's description. We'll also need a MIDI controller and I'm going to use the Donner N25 here. But later I'll also use a standard USB MIDI cable to connect my big synths to this setup. Ok, let's boot this construction. Boot time till desktop is roughly one and a half minutes with this setup, but my SSD is really eMMC and it's connected to the slower USB ports because I experience crashes otherwise, as I said, earlier days. Thanks to the seamless x64 emulation, I could install most plugins and software that's really for Intel and AMD architecture without any problems. So I installed Reaper and those MPC plugins I showed in an earlier video. One important program that can't be installed is iLock or Pace, which refuses to run inside an emulator. Without this licensing tool, a lot of commercial software won't work. Ok, let's run the usual benchmarks here and also answer one viewer question. First, 
How good or bad is latency? As usual, I connect an external hardware synthesizer with its left channel audio output directly to my Zoom R20 audio recorder, and its right channel we go into the audio output of the Raspberry Pi and from there into the Zoom R20. I will then read the time difference in Audacity. Ok, that's roughly 30 milliseconds, let's try another interface. Once again 32 milliseconds and I already reduced the buffer size to 64 samples here. Let's also take a look at how fiddly this touchscreen is. Watch me starting the DAW and adding two plugins in real time. This worked surprisingly well. I managed to hit all the right menu options on the first attempt. One of my viewers asked me if it's possible to use the contact player here. And as you can see, yes it is. Installing it was no problem at all. The last test is a real world test. How many plugins can we use simultaneously before the system caves in? Let's use some resource hungry plugins and see how far we get. I'm going to move this setup over to my workstation. Let's begin with a stage piano plugin. This is a sampled Yamaha C7 piano, size is roughly 1 gigabyte. Next up is the contact player and I'm using the Irish harp instrument here. Again, size is around 1 GB. And here is the Fabric XL Rumpler plugin used for a choir sound. I'll use the Mini D plugin for bass drone. I'll also play a melody using the Stage EP plugin. Here's a look at how the CPU fares so far. And that's it for today. Windows 11 on the Raspberry Pi 5 running music software natively for Intel processors using the built-in emulator. And I think the Windows team really did a tremendous job with this emulator. This setup is totally stable once it's running and the overall performance should be good enough to produce music or use this setup in live performances. Be aware though that certain copyright protective measures such as I lock or pace currently don't work on the Raspberry Pi or ARM based processors. Also driver support for Windows on Raspberry Pi 5 
life is still in very early stages, so you still have to rely on a lot of external USB hardware like network adapters, sound cards or SSD drives. But give this a couple of more months and we should arrive at the state where all you need is the Raspberry Pi itself and maybe some MIDI controllers. So if you think this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. And I'm planning to buy a 3D printer, which should serve this channel very well. So if you want to support me financially, you can do so by using the super thanks button, joining my Patreon, becoming a member of this YouTube channel, or buy some music on Bandcamp. But there's no pressure to do so. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very very soon. Bye bye.